In order to develop the perfect chest workout for you, there are two key things we need to do. First, we need to look in the mirror to see what areas are lacking. And then we need to choose the right exercises to properly target those areas. To put this workout together, we are going to break our chest into three parts. We're going to look at the upper chest, the middle, and the lower part of our chest. The reason why I break it up this way is because of the different directions these muscle fibers run. Because a weak upper chest is so common, we're going to look at exercises that emphasize this area first. The decline push-up is a great compound exercise for the upper chest. It can be loaded by adding weight to a backpack. You can make it even more effective by placing your one hand on a block or a few books. Then push with the hand on the block, leading with that side. As you push up, your torso rotates toward the arm that's pushing. What this does is it adds horizontal adduction to your push-up. This is one of the jobs your chest does, moving your arm across your body. When using bands, I like to work unilaterally. Anchoring the band is something a bit lower than my butt. Brace yourself with one foot in front of the other, and then press the band up and across your body. The next one I like to do with bands is a low to high band fly. I don't normally do this exercise unilaterally, but one of the cool things about doing it unilaterally is with your other hand, you can really feel which muscle fibers are working. Just put your hand on your upper chest and feel how hard those muscle fibers are contracting. Then put your fingers on your lower chest and feel those fibers. They're relaxed with virtually no tension on them at all, which really illustrates the value of working our chest from these different directions. Dumbbell incline presses and flies work our upper chest. If you're in the market for a bench, try to find one that has multiple incline settings, as the cheap ones like mine only have a 45 degree setting, and 30 degrees is a better angle, taking more of the load off the shoulders and putting it onto your chest. When programming your chest workouts, you should hit your weakest point first with a compound movement. I would choose three or four different chest exercises for your workout. How you spread them out through the week will depend on your training split. The exercises for our middle chest are the ones that typically would be considered the best overall mass builders. Regular push-ups, you can add weight to these, do archer push-ups, or do them off a block to add in horizontal adduction. Band presses are great as you can adjust the anchor point up or down slightly until you get just the right feel. You want a little more middle and lower chest? Then just move the band up. More upper and middle chest? Move the band down. We can't miss dumbbell bench press, a solid mass builder. If you're a guy who doesn't have much of a visible chest, these are the exercises you want to be starting your workouts with. I did a poll on my community page asking what area of your chest you have the most trouble with and the area that got the second most votes and it was a close second to the upper chest was the lower chest. Incline push-ups work well for the low chest. I find a reverse grip is the most comfortable. Dips are great for your lower chest as well. Now it's important to have a forward lean when doing dips as it hits the chest better and takes some of the pressure off the shoulder. When adding weight, it works best to use chains or a backpack worn in reverse, as it helps you get into that forward leaning position. Here, I'm using a couple of ankle weights strapped together to add an additional 20 pounds. You can make this movement easier by letting the back of your feet touch the floor to assist. Once again, I want to talk about cheap home benches and the decline bench press. Now the decline bench press is a good exercise for the lower chest. What I do with my bench, instead of setting it in the decline position, is I put the back end up on a step. The reason for this is it gives me more low back support. If I just lowered the back of the bench, I get an arch in my low back and can risk straining it when I sit back up with the weights. The seat is adjustable on a good quality bench and one more thing that I'll be looking for when I finally get around to buying a new bench. Now watch this playlist next so you can find the best exercises you can do to build and develop your entire body at home. That way, we can keep working out while having fun. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50. We'll talk to you again in the next one.